Hello, it's me, TH Massacre. Um, I I am going to do a. <laughs> this is the start of this is going to be epic. So just gonna just gonna pull that. Um, for those who don't know me, I talk for ages about all things mystical, wonderful, connected to the occult, connected to spirituality and ancient Egypt and magic and all kind of weird hermeticism and esoteric stuff. Um. Today, and I also talk a lot about Plato's Cave, um, today, however, you'll be pleased to know that I am not going to be talking about Plato's Cave. I'm going to be talking about my second favourite subject, <laughs> which is The Bathos, this piece by William Hogarth. Um, this is a really, really, really important piece, um, an important piece of art. And I'm going to sort of, um, I'm going to put it up on the screen, it's going to be easier rather than me keep holding it up like that. Um, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, explain what this video is about. There's going to be lots of sections to this. And then I'm going to um, exp explain kind of why it's relevant and all that. Anyway, anyway, look, let's just dive in and just see where we go. Yeah. Um, so this piece of art here is probably one of my favourite pieces of art of all time. Um, so much so that I have, um, oh, it's not on that arm, so much so that I have, I have it tattooed here on my arm, okay, a version of it, um, which I absolutely adore. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to explain why this piece of art is so powerful, why it is so, so amazing and why it's so prophetic and why I believe as well it's very, um, it's, it's a signature piece to the end of the age of Pisces. Um, so, the, just like Plato's Cave, this is extremely layered, extremely complex, and I'm going to begin to sort of do my best to sort of break it down in as many simple terms as possible. Um, for those that don't know, William Hogarth was a British um, artist um, in the 17th century. He was a engraver by trade. Um, who then turned turned uh, turned his skills to painting? Um, his art is renowned. It is standalone, up there with the best. Um, he's probably one of the greatest British painters um, or British artists, in my humble opinion. Um, largely because of um, his knowledge of symbolism and the occult is is one of the reasons why I'm saying that. Um, in my opinion, he was definitely in. He was definitely high up in secret societies for sure. When you look at his, if you look at his work, in fact, actually, I can do one better than that because up here, up here, I have two of my favourite books. Oh, I always forget about. But here, as you can begin to see, if you go through his work, it is absolutely. Is, is first of all his work was just well, it's just stunning the amount of work he did it's why we need to get rid of iPhones people um, <laughs> and Netflix um, and all those other things that distract us which is what this video is about anyway Hogarth was definitely um, definitely into the occult he knew a lot about symbolism and this particular piece here is littered with esoteric symbolism, all connected to some very important things connected to the age of Pisces. So why not explain what the image is and then we'll then we'll dive in and dis dissect it. So in this image, and I'm gonna put it up on the screen and I'm gonna I'm gonna read it to you by looking at it. So in this image we see a depiction of old father time who is taking his last breath, it says the word Finney in a puff of smoke. Um, that is a puff of smoke from the opium pipe that he's just taken his last final hit on. There's a broken opium pipe um, that just that, that is just laying over his broken scythe um, that he's holding in his left hand. Okay, and what this what this image is? So old father time. Um, we can see that it we can see that it's old father time time because there's the hourglass. Um, but by his by his by his bum and by his will and testament, yeah, and the hourglass is broken, so it's signifying the end of time. Okay, old father time for those who are into their esoteric knowledge, old father time is the angel of death, hence why he has wings on his back. Okay, and the scythe, which is the which is the sickle, which is known for reaping. Okay, the harvester of souls. But what many people don't realise is that the Angel of Death and Old Father Time are all re so representative of Cronus. Okay, and this is really key. So this is where we get into 
the good old stuff that I love to talk about. And Cronus, and look again here, we can see here Cronus has his scythe, okay? So here we've got Cronus in his scythe and he's doing something horrific there. Um, because Cronus, who was the, was the Greek god um, that was representative of the planet Saturn, okay? And this is where we get the term Satan from because the Greeks worships um, Cronus and then and for the planet Saturn. So Saturn, again, as, I, as I've talked about in other videos, Saturn is a twin star of Ra, i.e. the sun. One is dark, one is light. Saturn is known as the death star, the dead star, the black star, okay? It's the opposite twin to, to, to Ra, to our sun. The sun provides us with life and is life-giving. The sun projects heat and warmth and light that literally nurtures every single living creature and living being on this planet. Saturn, on the other hand, is has a magnetic pull of that's 578 times the, the that of the Earth, and it is known as the Reaper deity. The ancients believed that it reaped and harvested souls, and that Saturn is part of winter. That Saturn controls that controls our winter and reaps everything. Um, reaps everything ready for spring okay hence why he has the sickle that's why the sickle is such a if you ever see the sickle anywhere okay on a flag or anything it is representative of the reaper deity of this reaper god so the greeks and the and the romans um both on both recognized and honored cronus slash saturn okay so Saturn is the Roman name for that god, for that deity. And just going back to how the ancients used to imagine it, the ancients um, attributed different gods to the different planets. And they claimed that each one of these planets had different energies, Venus being love, Saturn being death, Mars being war, all that kind of stuff, yeah? So, and it shouldn't kind of, for those, for those people who are into their spirituality, you can begin to, um, Mercury is the planet of communication. Yeah, all of these things connect to our to our chakras. Yeah, to the se the seven observable planets are all representative of the seven main chakras that everyone's taught. However, the seven chakras are not complete. That is just what what common spirituality understands. It's way more complicated and way more layered than that. Um, anyway, I don't want to backtrack a bit. So. This image is of, of Saturn, of Cronus, of Old Father Time, a.k.a. the Angel of Death, okay? Um, a.k.a. Satan, <laughs> okay? So this is a picture of Satan on his deathbed, okay? Um, it's his him taking his last breath. Now, before I go into the whole Cronus and Saturn thing, um, I want to sort of just depict, like, what this represents and, and like, what, what the image is really trying to depict. So... Before I go into that, I want to like, so this was one of the last pieces of art that William Hogarth did for the Times newspaper. So he was one of their chief engravers. And what that meant was that he would take copper plates and he would engrave them, carve them with all these tiny little etchings that you can see, these tiny, tiny, tiny like lines were all individual etchings onto a copper plate. They would then used to take that copper plate and then it would be part of the printing press that, that would go into the printing press in order to just run off lots and lots of copies with ink. So the, the copper would just go through and just print these images onto tons and tons, hundreds and thousands of newspapers that were then distributed. So this was very like powerful technology back in its day. It was, you know, the first time where really artists could actually present their work, not just not just have the ability to kind of um, to just do one copy. The copper engraving was really the sort of the, the birth of, of of duplication, yeah, with with precision, accuracy. So it meant that instead of just an artist creating one one thing, they could create multiple things. And Hogarth may um, the, a lot of artists um, really reaped from this kind. Of, Hogarth made more money from copies of his prints than he did from making them from the Times. That's something um, I can't remember. I read that, but it was amazing, a very interesting point to make. So. So this was the last engraving that Hogarth did for the Times newspaper. This was at a time where Hogarth basically had fallen out with the Times. The Times is one of the biggest newspapers in the world, one of the longest and oldest running ones. It's also one of the most despicable media corporations ever existed and has been for hundreds of thousands of years because it's covered in symbolism. If you study that symbolism, you'll know exactly what it's all about. And it's very much a Piscean institution. 
in this image, the Times newspaper is actually on fire. It's actually caught fire and is beginning to burn. Hogarth was manifesting or predicting the, 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 the end of that. So what, what, what's this piece actually about? So, okay, it's old father time on his deathbed with all this, what looks to be chaos and destruction around him. What this piece actually, the reason why Hogarth, the, the story goes is that Hogarth made this piece in retaliation because the Times newspaper had begun to censor him as an artist. This is at a time where Hogarth as an artist, despite his connections with with the with the certain societies and that, he was presenting, he definitely had a moral compass because he was he was probably one of the only sort of major sort of in my opinion like major artists out there who really sort of tried to draw the parallels and the absurdities of the of the of the corruption and evil of the of the aristocracy and how it really affected the lower and working class he had a brilliant eye for detail and an incredible um incredible level of humor it was a very dark dark <laughs> dark kind of um uh, he had a very dark humor um like this is another piece that he did. This is one where I don't know if you can see this so much, but this is two boys that are putting a candle wick out on the on the on the pigeon, and it says the tyrant in the boy. This is from another piece that Hogarth did that I dearly love as well. Um, so so anyway, Hogarth did this final piece for the Times in retaliation for censorship because what Hogarth was doing, Hogarth was starting to in, to include in some of his work. Well, in, in a lot of his work was the was the sort of messaging and, and the sort of um, the, the social commentary yeah about about the injustices of society and how awful the how corrupt politics was and all that sort of stuff anyway he's the times newspaper obviously gave him a lot more uh, clamped probably gave him a lot more let's say e probably edited his work heavily um he probably was pushed more and more into a corner where he felt that his voice was being suppressed. So he created this piece called The Bathos. Um, and it says in here, it says, manner of sinking in sublime paintings inscribed to the dealer in dark pictures. And that dealer in dark pictures is Cronus, is Saturn, is Satan. Because Hogarth understood how reality works and understood who was in charge of this physical realm. He understood that all the powers that be from the crown, through the judicial system, through all the corporations, through all the, the, the banking institutions, basically everything represented in this image, okay, and I'm going to break this down for you in a second. But he recognised that all these institutions that were all owned by Cronus, they were all part of Cronus, the crown, yeah, this god of the crown who... In, if you if you study in this if you study this kind of the things that I'm talking about here, um, especially where books like this are concerned, yeah. There's a in esoteric circles and for people like me, I don't I believe that 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 there are multiple gods, okay. That, and I'm not saying whether they're real or not. I'm saying that there, that there are multiple gods that people worship. It's not just the three monotheistic religions. The three monotheistic religions are religions for. The bulk of society for they were created almost similar around the same sort of time but prior to the monotheistic religion there was polytheism and polytheism was the was the accepted worship of multiple gods okay and this was you know again going back to the time of ancient roman greek ancient roman ancient greece both the romans copied the gods from the greeks and the greeks copied their gods from the egyptians okay so it's it's the 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 there's like a copy pasta of these sort of of this hierarchy of gods, and what I'm what I'm saying is that what Hogarth understood and knew was that people in high society in the aristocracy do not worship Christian a Christian god. They do not necessarily worship per se a uh, the, the 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 same god that Jew, Jewish people and Muslim people worship okay they worship different gods because many people high up in aristocracy they're obsessed with ancient greece and rome and they still carry on the traditions of these ancient gods okay whether you believe that or not is up to you the symbolism is there okay many of them worship some of them worship jupiter some of them worship venus some of them worship saturn many of them worship saturn because he's a reaper deity he's a powerful god so hogarth knew this so hogarth Hogarth kind of um, basically sort of wanted to do, create a prophetic kind of symbolic meaning in this image. And what, what is that meaning? So what, what was this image? 
Well, what Hogarth was depicting was that he was he was trying to point out that when you censorship art, when you end freedom of speech and freedom of freedom of expression, to be more specific, yeah, his opinion was that you will create chaos and the end of the world, and. I just, I, I've always loved that concept about this picture, yeah. And as you can see, like, he's got a picture of the times that's burning and then all around everything is just utter broken chaos all around him. Now, whether the Times newspaper knew that that's what he meant, um, I don't think they did because I think he did this piece and this piece, like I said, it's a very, it's a, it, I'm going to explain the other side of the coin of this in a second. Um, he did this piece of art because um, he wanted to, to really kind of like play one, play, he, he was playing on top of his employers. He, he basically was kind of saying like, fuck you. <laughs> like, if you think you can control and censor my voice, it's going to be the end and the downfall of you. It will be the end of time. It will be, you know, hence, look, why is, why is the time new, Times newspaper called The Times? It's because it serves Cronus, the old father time, yeah? Okay? They're, they're paymaster, right? Okay? So, the, so, 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 what, so what Hogarth was saying here was saying, but by burning art, by destroying art, by, con by controlling artists and suppressing them, you will wreak havoc and you will bring hell on earth, was literally what, what, what Hogarth's final message was as a bon voyage for his final, for the final piece of work that he did for the Times newspaper. Now, the other side of this meaning is something a little bit different. Now, if I was to look at this image from the eyes of someone who is, say, in favour of this deity and idolises them, there's a real kind of detail that we need to zoom in and, and read, which is a clue to what I'm about to say. So, if we, if you actually, if we look at the, if we look at his will and testament here, this is the, one of the most fascinating things. The original will and testament says, "All and every atom thereof too," and then there's a name that's been scrubbed down. We can't see who that was. Okay. It then says, in replace of that, it says chaos. So it's saying that it's going to to leave all and every atom thereof to chaos. Who am I appoint my sole executor? And then they've got witnesses below. Yeah, there's three names of witnesses below that. Okay, and we can I'll to do another video about who those witnesses are and what they represent. What this will and testament says, okay, is it basically says that the reaper, the reaper, got re, reaper deity, yeah, the angel of death, is leaving. And so, I.e. Saturn, yeah, this 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 evil god, yeah, this this Satan, um, is leaving everything, every atom, yeah. So every single thing in the entire world, it says the word atom, yeah, every atom in the entire world to chaos. And Saturnists and people who worship Saturn as a god believe that Saturn is one of is is the reaper god of death, but that there was an even bigger deity um, of darkness called chaos they believe that the universe is is literal primordial waters of chaos yeah and there's an old famous i bet i'm not gonna be able to find it i was looking a bit earlier but in this old magic book i've got here it talks about one of the oldest ancient symbols for chaos is the is the serpent biting its own tail and it's called the Bracus. where well, it's going to be here i know it is hold on i literally had it bookmarked uh, i should have bookmarked it i didn't bookmark it i was looking at it earlier um, if it comes up, it comes up, but, um, it's a very famous, it's a, oh look, here we go, uh, da, 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 da. it's not quite that, it's, it's near here somewhere, um, it's a very famous symbol where it's a tail eating its own tail, okay, and this tail comes from the ancient Egyptian deity or, or god known as Apophis, and the ancient Egyptians believed a very similar thing, in the same thing that, that these guys believed, they believed that, they believed that the world was, was that, that the entire reality of light and good was always fighting against this evil dark snake, this evil dark energy that was everywhere. Okay, so and you can imagine looking up at the sky, just pitch blackness and darkness. We can understand how they can come to that 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 inner standing and understanding. Okay, so so this in this image, Hogarth was depicting that Saturn was willing to leave every single atom to chaos. Okay, to basically just let everything fall to darkness, fall to fall to chaos slash apophis. Okay, this primordial water of just death and destruction. 
So in this picture, what is, what is dying and what is being broken, what's being destroyed? So some of the items here that we can see that are easily identifiable, okay, is we have the broken crown, symbolising the end of monarchy and the end of crown rule. We have the broken palette, symbolising the end of colour and art. We have the broken gun, symbolising the end of the war machine. The broken bell, symbolising the end of sound. We have the broken church in the background, symbolising the, bro the breakdown of religions. We have the broken, um, we have the broken pub sign, symbolising the end of that institution, which was made famous throughout the Piscean Age of people consuming alcohol it's a great little detail here as well as obviously that the pub sign is called the world's end and there's the world literally on fire so this is an amazing piece of work if you think about it it's like Hogarth's taken a snapshot of Satan around all his chaos and destruction that he's wreaked that he's wreaked havoc on and then the pub sign that hangs and looms above him thanks man is literally the world on fire okay I think we all kind of can resonate a little bit with that at the moment right also, we'll notice that there's no leaves on the tree. We can see a man in a background who's unalived himself. And we can also see a ship sinking. We can see um, a broken varnish bottle, a broken varnish brush. There is a, um, there is a broken arrow, um, a bow and arrow. There's, a, there's an empty purse, i.e. the end of the money and, and finance, finances. Um, there is a also a cracked tombstone as well, even saying the end of the afterlife, the end of death. Um, there are way more details in this picture, but that will just cover the sort of the breakdown. So, what are all these things, and what do they symbolise? So, each and every single one of these things, and it's it's important to notice as well that there's this. I always forget the name of these um, these Greek kind of pillars that they put in all their temples. The end of the occult, okay, the end of temples. Um, all of these things symbolise the Piscean Age, okay? So occultists and anyone who understands Saturn and as as Cronus, yeah, will understand that we that the reality and is looked upon and calculated in a slightly different way. So, so so what what do I what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that the um, occultists and people who believe in multiple polytheistic gods believe that the earth goes through what's known as the proce procession and what that basically means is that they 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 know and because this is scientifically fact okay which again leave it up to you to decide what you believe but the earth's axis t tilts ever so slightly so the earth's axis doesn't point straight north it's on a slight tilt okay that means that what happens is the earth revolves 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 but Ever so slightly, it does it does a sort of circular motion. I'm not really giving you the greatest example by pointing to you. I can kind of do it like this. So if we get a, uh, it might be easy to do it with a pen. If we can imagine that, so this is the earth, yeah? And this is it on a slight tilt, yeah? Well, if I just face this towards you, so you imagine that you're looking at it, instead of it being dead straight like this and it turning dead straight, what happens is it does this. And over time, it draws a circle, okay? And this is known as the great the great year is the great procession okay and what that means is that the earth's axis okay so the north point of our axis instead of pointing straight up points to a different zodiac sign and over the course of 26,000 years roughly no one really knows because no one's been able to measure this it does a full revolution so before that currently and for the past 2000 years for certain pretty much since the age of jesus hence why christians use the symbol of the fish yeah the vesica where is it where's my symbol let me draw my symbol um this symbol here let's get rid of it that is the age of pisces okay and that's because the Earth's procession for the past 2,000 years has been pointing at the, at the, in the zodiac sign of Pisces. Okay? Prior to that, it was in actually pointing, it was in Aries. And so that time was pretty much during the, the bulk of the Roman and Greek rule and the end of the Egyptian, civil, uh, the, the fall of Egypt. Okay? So that's why if you look at symbolism throughout ancient Greece and particularly the fall of the, fall of the last dynasties of ancient Egypt, loads of statues outside temples all were rams. It was the, it was the great year of the ram. And the ram represents war and all that kind of stuff. So it was there was there was massive like 
massive wars and battles and civil and, and issues going on during that time during the age of Aries, and then after the age of Aries was the age of Pisces. Okay, and throughout the age of Pisces. The Age of Pisces has seen the, the introduction of the banking system, of, um, of religion has basically been created. It's, we've seen the institution of the, of, of the monarchies being in the, particularly in most, most Western, or most, let's, say, let's say most countries to be honest. It's had, it's had monarchs in, govern all over the world, you know, with the British Empire and stuff. It's seen Everything basically in the last 2,000 years is, has come under the Piscean Age, okay? Like literally every single thing that we can sort of think about. Now, what's happening is the Earth's procession, we're at the end of the Age of Pisces. Some people like me believe we are out of the Age of Pisces. We're just living with the same, we're, we just, we're still living with the same 3D structures, yeah? But technically, in my opinion, I think we're actually in the Age of Aquarius. Because the age of Aquarius is is about is is a totally different energy to the age of age of Pisces. Okay, so so what am I talking about? Like energies of of these ages and stuff. Well, look again. This is the last time we ever had our Earth's north axis pointing in a different zodiac was before recorded history, like genuine recorded history that we can all agree on and categorically kind of date properly and and decipher correctly. Let's say that. We don't have enough documentation to know what it was like during the during the um, the age of Aries and what that truly meant and how different reality was because those civilizations are gone they fell, so there's a good chance that as we come to the end of the age of Pisces that the current civilizations will also fall. There's for people like me who study this stuff in in great detail. What and the, it's a very logical reason why it is yeah, and I'll explain why it's because in my humble opinion yeah. When these ages, these great empires and these great civilizations build all their infrastructures and, and whatever it is, yeah, during their age, it's all done with the energy of that, of where the, of where the Earth's north axis is pointing, okay? And for anyone into astrology and stuff like that, if you understand the difference between your north node and your south node, your north node is about where you're going to gain all your strength and all your and all your all your successes and abundances. It doesn't always necessarily mean that it's good. It's not about good versus evil. It's just that's where all your strengths lie. So wherever wherever the north axis of Earth is pointing. If people tap into that and they tap into the energies of that age, there's a good chance that they're going to dominate. Okay, think about that. So the Piscean age has been dominated by religion. It's been dominated by alcohol. Like alcohol has been such a prolific fixture in the Piscean age on a massive, massive level, which is why I think Hogarth included the World's End pub sign here. Because it's such an obscure thing. He could have picked a bakery. He could have picked, uh, he could have picked any type of business, but he chose specifically to use a, a pub sign in this. Um, and, and if you study Hogarth, like, like I have moderately to a degree, you understand that this man was insane with precision and detail. He didn't make a fucking mistake, let's just say that. Well, he made a couple of mistakes, but I'm not here to talk about that today. So, so this image here depicts the, the death of Saturn, the death of, 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 of Cronus, during the age of Pisces, okay? So Pisces, the age of Pisces, in my opinion, is very much been ruled by the, by the, by, by the age of, by, by Saturn, by Satan, by Cronus, okay? Um, if we look at things like, oh, I'm not gonna start breaking down Sybil's song and things like that, but it talks about this new world order, um, like Saturn, the Saturnian age was known as a golden age of prosperity and abundance and all that kind of stuff. But in my humble opinion, I don't think Saturn as a deity is a good deity. I don't think Cronus or or um, or Saturn or Satan or whatever, however you want to term this, this or the Angel of Death. Yeah, I don't think that that is a that is an energy that is something to to be drawn to and to enjoy and to love. It's a reaper. It's a reaper deity. It basically kind of one could look at it, if you wanted to look at the great year. This is basically like us coming out of winter. Like the 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 age of Pisces is like the is. Is, is a Piscean age is a very it's a very 
cold age if it's ruled by Saturn, okay, because that is a reaper deity. And it's kind of, in my opinion, not coincidental that religion has probably caused the deaths of more human beings and animals and, and, and destruction to land than, than anything else on this, than anything else, to be quite fair, in, in, in recorded history that I see it. Um, nearly every single disagreement is based on that. Well, the reason we have borders and, and nationalities and flags is pretty much all stems from religious control and these kind of ideologies of, that are all contained within this, yeah? Like the Crown Empire, the British Empire ruling all these countries and things like that. Look, this is as old as time, right? Every civilization does this. This happened during the age, during the age of Aries. C countries all did the same thing, yeah? They just emulate it. But this this image is really interesting because we're coming in like i said i believe we're actually now in the age of aquarius and what's happening is we're energetically in a different age and i, th I think we can feel and see that amongst the collective and amongst people who are physically changing and who are whose third eyes are opening and people are getting more connected with 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 nature and with with the spiritual realms and the metaphysical wonderful crazy reality that also exists around us yeah Throughout the Piscean Age, all of that has been contained. And alcohol does that. Alcohol is known, is an Arabic word that means spirit killer. al cool literally means spirit killer. So if people, if people drink alcohol, you're killing your own spirit, yeah? That's, that's how I kind of feel. And, and I, I, as someone who's like, like someone who's been, I've got Irish blood in me. Like I can drink most people under a table. That's not even an exaggeration. Like, and I'm not. That's not saying I'm proud of. But I have hollow legs. I have the ability to drink for days if I wanted to, non-stop. Now, I've known the difference between when I'm drinking and when I'm not, and I know for a fact that I can't. I can't function or tap into anything spiritual or anything remotely high vibrational when I've when I've got alcohol in my system it literally lowers my vibration it brings me down and it then falls then I want it I end up eating rubbish and it has a knock-on effect to so many things well alcohol in the Piscean age is has had such a knock-on effect to so many things it's permeated into society and it's been so normalized even to the point where in church they give you wine with free wine like as part of the thing yeah i personally think you only need a touch of, like literally a drop of alcohol to to kind of effectively do damage to yourself if you're taking this regularly i feel that you can't potentially connect to higher to, to higher levels of your own self and your own consciousness i'm not saying this is about connecting to gods and deities and all these things i'm saying that these things are connected to your higher consciousness and that you are not connected to your higher consciousness, yeah? So your, high, your higher consciousness, your expanded mind, is what sits between, is the bridge between you and these other mystical realms that most people don't know about, like astrology, numerology, tarot, or all kinds of divination, etc., etc. So... So, but let's let's go back to this image here, yeah, because this is now now we're kind of getting into a really sort of interesting thing here of looking at this this artwork and saying, well, okay, this is depicting the end of this this era, this end of this age. And um, what what has what has what has Hogarth here written? He's written that he's that they're willing to man to to that Saturn and Satan is going to leave everything to absolute chaos. And what my question is, if we go back to the will and testament, what was the name that was crossed out? Well, before everything get, gets left to chaos, what should it be left to? That, that, that's like a really interesting question with this piece of art here, yeah. Now, the Times newspaper, with their editorial staff and whatnot looking at this, if I was a Satanist or someone who worshipped Cronus or worshipped Satan or whatever, yeah, I would look at this and love this because this piece of art is sublime. It literally says that we, it says, manner of sinking in sublime paintings inscribed to dealers in dark pictures. And it's Saturn, yes, Saturn is dying, but everything is being destroyed, which is exactly what Saturnists and people who idolise Satan want. They want absolute destruction. And, and then leaving it to the higher, their higher God. Saturn is not the highest of all evil gods. There is, like I said, the Egyptians understood they used, uh, instead of Saturn, um, Sat Saturn, i.e. Satan, i.e. Cronus, to the Egyptians was known as Seth. So you have Seth, Saturn, Satan, okay? All the similar kind of things. And Seth, spelt, or Set to be precise, yeah? Set was the opposite evil twin 
of Ra, yeah? And they 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 were like opposites, good v evil. It's yin, it's yang, it's 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 light, it's dark, okay? But Saturn Satan is not wholly entirely evil, it's not primordial chaos, it's not complete darkness. Saturn is has beautiful rings and Saturn it rains diamonds on Saturn. Saturn is an abundant and a really abundant deity and planet. And without winter, we wouldn't we, we without winter we wouldn't be able to reap for summer, okay? Like there are there are some schools of thought about the realm of Briarways, yeah, endless sunshine and things like that. And there's potential that with the death of Saturn, yeah, the death of time, that maybe when time stops, winter doesn't come, that we can remain in one constant period of time, like an eternal spring. I very much think that that is what's happening now. I generally think that's going to take place. If when the age of Aquarius does come and it's manifested in the physical for everyone to undeniably, to, to, to not deny anymore, then it will be, there's potential that the age of Aquarius is going to be an eternal spring where there will just be constant supply of, of food and there will never be any hunger and starvation and things like that. Now, People who are into astronomy and things like that think that that is physically impossible. They just will say, well, there's no way that that can happen because of the, how, how the planets, how, how the Earth revolves around, around the sun or the sun revolves around the Earth, who knows? That kind of stuff. Anyway, no, we're not going there. We're not going there. Um, <laughs> or the distance of the sun. Yeah. It's just remarkable to me that, no, no, I'm not gonna say it, no. No, we're not, well, that's a whole different video. We're not bringing in conspiracy theories. This is about Hogarth. So, um, <laughs> let me take a sip of tea, let me rebalance. So this Hogarth piece, right, is depicting that when Saturn dies, that everything comes crashing down with it. And, that, and that's, a, that's fairly logical, because if you think about it, all these institutions like the Crown, the banks, the the, relig uh, the pubs, the, the, rel the churches and all that, they were all built during the Piscean Age. And if the Piscean Age then ends, why should they continue? Because they're not gonna energetically match the Age of Aquarius, right? So the Age of Aquarius is much more feminine than the Age of Pisces. The Age of Pisces is pretty much about subjugating the feminine energy. Um, I'll tell you, like, you know with a crown, right? You know this, have you seen this famous you know this famous gold ball that they, they have with the, do you know what, can I, I'll put it up, I'll try and put it up on here, I'll try and remember to do this. But you know this symbol here with a big ball with a thing? Yeah, that's, that is Venus being controlled and held by the crown. So um, the crown and scepter and, oh, do you know what, we're not going down there, we're not going down there. It's, it's all connected to, it's all connected to Cronus basically. That particular symbol is about possession of the feminine energy. Okay, that's why that gold ball that, that, that the king gets crowned with and coronated with, that gold ball with the cross on the top represents feminine energy. And it's about the monarchy and the crown, i.e. Cronus, i.e. Saturn, i.e. Satan, controlling this feminine energy during the Piscean age. And if we look at history, like that's, that's been, that is glaringly obvious with every institution, with every legal system, like with everything, going back to the time when they were burning witches, right, you know, the equality, the inequality between masculine and feminine energy, just energy alone, has been completely out of balance. And that's obviously has been has been portrayed in the awful treatment of how of how women are in our society. Women now, in this day and age, it's horrific that women can't walk the streets at night because they don't feel safe. It's crazy that we don't have a society where people can walk around safe at night, full stop. Um, but that is because we're, this is happening here. This is the end of times. This is the, the world's end. But people have this idea, they have this cataclysmic feeling that this is an apocalypse and that you know, the world is about to go to, that everything's crashing and burning and just being destroyed. But that is all an illusion in Plato's, in Plato's cave. And I'm not gonna talk about Plato's cave, but that isn't what's happening. Every civilization that crashes, new civilizations come through. Yeah, like when when Rome fell, it wasn't just the end of the world. Yeah, when 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 Greece fell, it wasn't when the ancient when when the Egyptians uh, ancient Egypt fell, it wasn't the end of civilization. It just new orders and new things come into place. Now, um, going back to 
uh, going back to these kind of these these ages and stuff the age of Aquarius is a much more balanced energy it's much more it's much more in favor of feminine energy to be fair it's a it's a it's a kind of water bearing age it's an age that's associated with technology so we we just entered in into this digital realm and we've now got the invention of ai we've now got all this kind of technology at our disposal which i know everyone is absolutely fearful of i personally think that the only reason this technology is problematic is if it's in control of people who are used to this energy like yeah so you wouldn't want this high quantum physics and quantum machine computing being in the hands of the current leaders of the world who quite frankly in my opinion none of them are fit to do their job they are they've all failed these are the weakest leaders and and the most let's just say untrustworthy people you could ever hope to imagine you wouldn't trust them with anything they just can't seem to do anything right quite frankly unless it serves their own pockets um but i believe that is all changing because because of this this shift in this in the cosmos yeah so so this picture here was depicting saying that saturn was leaving everything to chaos right and if you was an editor of the newspaper, you would say, you would literally, as a Saturnist, be like, well, this is perfect, because this basically says that at the end of the age of Pisces, everything gets taken and destroyed, and we fulfill our destiny as honouring this lord of chaos and time. And effectively, what they would be for trying to kind of basically do is that if if everything was left to chaos, yeah, even with Saturn, the angel of death on Earth dying, Saturn would forever reign control. Because uh, like, as we can see here, like there's no life, there, there, there's just grey clouds, there's no sun. It's literally like, the, it's, where, it's where life on Earth dies completely and then darkness consumes another planet, yeah? If we think about our cosmos, yeah, there is... Our, our universe is so vast and big we know there's life on other planets in distant distant universes and galaxies we know there's multiple universes right which is mind-boggling so we have to accept that there is life on other planets and that there is also darkness and death we know that we're surrounded by dead planets so if you were to take if you were to look at reality from that perspective you would look at earth as this tiny speck it's like it's like imagine one drop of water on Mars. That's how Earth must look to the vast space that surrounds it. Yeah, the only other things that uh, that we can see, like from from our perspective from here, is uh, are the are literally burning stars. That's all we can see. We can't see any life around us other than the life that is on our planet this is why we're such a precious planet it's why people should take their lives more seriously and start taking this reality more seriously and start holding these politicians and these these corrupt individuals that are running that are, that are running the age of pisces these people need to be held to account it doesn't matter because even though the public and humanity couldn't physically do it there are things that are happening magically in the world that are forcing the collapse of this. So this image right here, it literally depicts what's going on now. It literally is like a, it was almost like a premonition from, from you know, from a, from a golden age of, of society, of society, of, 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 in my opinion, of like artists, of art, of high level art. Like, there's no one, no modern artist, no, they, we, we have Tracy Emin and Damien Hurst, right? Like, back in those days they had Hogarth. We've been cheated, royally fucking cheated by these contemporary artists and stuff. But anyway, people now, they get, they think that there's beauty and, and they think there's beauty in, the, in a Nike trainer. Like, that's how low society has fallen. You look at the architecture around us, it's, it's woeful. Society really needs to demand more. But anyway, that is going to happen. We've we think humanity, yeah, like human beings think because they have phones or because we have access to more information that we're more intelligent and that we're ascending as a civilization. In reality, most people, they are descending without even realizing it. But anyway, I, I believe that is changing. I believe we are starting to see now a cusp of where before people hit rock bottom that they begin to intellectually ascend and spiritually ascend and all these things. Because this is this is the this is a this was a prediction, yeah. That if you we've got to remember, yeah, that this is this is a manifestation. It doesn't mean it's actually 
going to happen. It doesn't mean that it has to happen, yeah? It doesn't mean that with the end of the age of Pisces that Saturn, Satan has to reap all souls and everything living with it. If we comply and we go along with things, if we go along with this manifestation, then yeah, there's every chance that that could happen. But I personally believe that we are entering, um, we're, we're entering an age where, where, where mystical and strange things are going to start to happen and reality is going to shift and change in a way that is, is just so amazing that it's the opposite of this weird reality that we sort of seem to exist in now that we take take for normal um and i'll do a whole video about that so um i'm just checking my notes i did make some notes here so um bu -bu 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 yeah um so this Im so so why is this a man so so what is this image is it a manifestation like is it a prediction Ye yes like a prediction and a manifestation or a prophecy are all the same thing, okay? Nostradamus, like all of these guys who predicted stuff, yeah? They're not predicting it. They're not, it's not, it's not necessarily that they are like having futuristic visions. What it is is that, is that they are channeling information and then speaking it into existence, often through the art of Logos, yeah? Which then turns, if, if there is enough energy behind it and enough power and symbolism contained within it and there is enough desire to manifest it, it will come into fruition, okay? So occultists, like people who study the dark occults and study logos and study um, magic, yeah? Magic isn't waving a wand and trying to, trying to make things disappear or float or levitate and all that kind of stuff, although that is an aspect of obviously traditional magic as we know it magic is when you can have something in the background subliminal a tiny little symbol that you aren't even drawn your attention to or you're not aware of and have it actually have an effect on your subconscious that's true magic that's the real dark arts that is really what Hogarth did what Hogarth was adept and skilled at as a high level occultist because he knew the power of symbolism and stuff and I wrote this quote down here because I forgot to I keep forgetting about it but it's amazing it says Confucius wrote um, famously quoted, signs and symbols rule the world, not words or law. And this is something that modern human beings cannot get their head around because they unfortunately are so poorly educated. They genuinely believe in their constructed, delivered, convenient reality that is spoon fed to them. What they, most human beings have no idea how manipulated they actually are. They have no idea that they have very little choice in life, that they are completely manipulated into always making the same decisions, often the same bad decisions and creating the same bad habits. Because this age of, of powerful ruling elites, yeah, of, of the aristocracy, they don't want people thriving at the lower class level. They want everyone to be subjugated to them so that they can have more money. It's very much an us and them thing. That's how reality works. They, the, the rich ruling elite cannot live on a planet where eight billion, where eight billion other people are all driving Lamborghinis. It would not work for them. It's just not gonna happen, right? So there's always been this element of those with hidden knowledge and power over those without power and knowledge, yeah? Money and power, right? If you want to become a powerful leader or a powerful musician or a powerful artist or whatever, you just need to start studying the kind of, the, the power of symbolism and the subconscious because then you can manipulate your art to be consumed en masse. This is something that Hollywood has known since, the, since its conceptualization. Hollywood was, the, the, the very essence of Hollywood was created off the back of the off the back of the war machine to create propaganda material. That's how films and entertainment even began in the first place, okay? Cartoons, the very first early cartoons were all propaganda, okay? They weren't there to for, as entertainment, right? And if we even study, and I talk about this all the time, if you study the word entertainment, the word enter means to means inside, the word tain means to occupy or possess, and the word meant comes from the Latin word mens, which means your mind. So the word entertainment means inside to possess your mind. 
So, like, it's been there. It's the, the, the etymology of all, these, of all this stuff is that the clues in the etymology and the origins of these words, we just, too, we just accept the word entertainment to mean something that's fun. When in actual fact, it isn't. The word entertainment means something that controls and possesses you inside your subconscious. That's, that's the true definition of what the word entertainment means. Which is why, you know, I talk about it all the time, it's why Hollywood and music videos are littered with checkerboard patterning, checkerboard flaws. Because this, this checkerboard patterning literally is a programming of tool. It's what the, it's what the, the mace, the, those masons, yeah, with that number, yeah? I'm not one of them, but this is the, the their degrees, yeah, that they have, yeah? That's why they have that pattern flaw, because it programs the subconscious. So whatever you're speaking or, or visually projecting to them, with that, in, with that, with that checkable patterning, is literally encoded into deep into people's subconscious. Now, no one, be, no one, no, most people won't believe that; they won't understand it. But if they study it, they'll find it to be true. And there's a book here just to validate that point because this is important because I don't take this down because I'm not lying this is just this is for entertainment purposes only but this stuff I'm talking about is all research if you study this book here which is called subliminal seduction this book here the reason why I picked this up is because it was listed as one of, of Stanley Kubrick's top 10 favorite books of all time and I was like why is Stanley Kubrick reading a book on subliminal seduction which says are you being sexually aroused by this picture and it's because you are. If you were to look at that picture, it will have an, an arousal effect. And the reason is, is because you can't see it, but in subliminal messaging is the words, S -E, the letters S-E-X on the ice cube. Now, the human eye can't see it, but the subconscious can. And this book goes into that, into great detail. It talks about how, when doing experiments, they would flash up an image for one thousandth of a second one thousandth of a, of, a, of a second, yeah, is, is faster than the human eye. It's faster than the frame, frame rate that human eyes can see. So they would flash up a, an image at one thousandth of a second and it still had a, prof and it had a profound effect on the people in the audience. They knew, they found, they discovered in the 70s that, that um, in the 60s and 70s, that subliminal messaging can actually program people. So what happened was the, the boom of, in fact, it was before the, before the 70s, sorry, this has been known for a long time by high-level occultists that subliminal messaging is powerful. Well, what happened was uh, post-war, during, during the advertisement boom, the ad men, yeah, what they, 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 they decided to start using this. So they started encoded subliminal messaging in all their advertisement and they saw sales go through the roof. They found that it had a massive effect on consumerism. So then they just decided to just really experiment and play with that. And what they then found was that fear cells, fear and sex cells, fear, sex and fear, sex and, and subliminal messaging is like a powerful combination for, for, for billion dollar sales. So, the, so during the boom of the advertising industry, what happened was these ad men were doing it and the government, the public caught on and, and, and you know, the medical world and I guess some scientific experts all said this is wrong we shouldn't do this this is manipulation um, and they passed some laws to ban subliminal messaging in the ad in advertisement it's illegal to to use subliminal messaging in advertisement but they didn't ban it in films and television or music that wasn't because that was classed as entertainment it wasn't it was only banned if you were selling a, a product now one could obviously argue the absurdity of that rule anyway, but the, the main thing shouldn't even be the absurdity. It's the fact that it's not illegal to put subliminal messaging in movies or television shows. That should horrify the public right there because literally if, they, if, if it was as powerful as this book teaches you it is, there's, and you know, the film Clockwork Orange, yeah, study Clockwork Orange with, with, with Kubrick, yeah, he was, he, that's what he was showing you. He was teaching you all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, when he's strapped in with the eyes and that, yeah? Um, subliminal messaging is powerful. There's, there's no reason why most of society can't be under hypnosis without even realising itself. Most people pretty much are. But anyway. Hypnotise into accepting this reality, perhaps, yeah? Hypnotise into accepting experimental medication, perhaps. Anyway. I don't want to go down into that dark realm of, of all that kind of stuff. But what I'm trying to say here is that Hogarth 
you know, these people knew about symbolism and in images like this are powerful symbols. There are iconic imagery in here that has a profound effect at changing so people's subconsciousness, right? So by projecting art and imagery and videos and movies and music and all this stuff en masse, you can physically change the collective consciousness of the public, right? I mean, that's how viral trends happen. That's how fashion trends happen. I remember in the 90s with, with Vanilla Ice, yeah, that song went wild and went massive, Ice Ice Baby, and then everyone was wearing shell suit track suits, like everyone. And they were flammable and dangerous, but everyone bought them, you know? It was like, it was madness. Anyway, ugly, horrendous outfits, like, but, but that just goes to show how powerful entertainment can actually be. It can convince people to wear something they would never ordinarily wear just because something they idolise has projected it onto them. You know, if I was Vanilla Ice, I would have had shares in shell suits. That would have been a genius manoeuvre uh, manoeuvre from his point of view. You know, that's why probably lots of these artists, they all have these side hustles, yeah? You wouldn't necessarily know if they were using subliminal messaging to sell you their own products. If they're not, they probably should be. And if they are doing that, you should know. You may, maybe you do, maybe you don't, yeah? You need to check the vibration of what you're, what you're consuming. Now, I personally think that what's going to start happening is, I think that, yes, fear, sex, and fear, and anger, and hatred, and, and sex, all these things sell, yeah? And that's what's given birth to all this consumerism and given birth to this age of Pisces because this is all built on fear, sex, war, death, all these kind of things, yeah? All these mechanics that are just controlling people and just keeping them in a low vibration. I personally feel that the age of Aquarius is a higher vibration, yeah? And I personally think that what's going to start happening now is that those who are operating on a higher vibration, those who create art and entertainment, but high vibrational entertainment, yeah? Like positive affirmations, films about love and 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 soulful and joyful experiences, yeah? Music that lifts the soul, not demonises it, yeah? Not constantly reaffirms to you about broken relationships, but talks about empowered love and romantic kind of, I don't know, ideas and concepts and escapes, yeah? High vibrational entertainment, in my opinion, is gonna be more in line with the age Aquarius. And I think people that then start using that will end up shaping and building the reality of the future. So the age of Aquarius is going to be built by our projections. And some interesting things to note, and there's a beautiful parallel for this, which is why this video is a fucking, I'm, I'm a genius in some respects when I talk about these subjects, because I love this stuff deeply. And it's stuff that I've not, I've not just read a book, like I've studied this, this art my life. Yeah, this is like, this is tattooed on my skin. Okay. Like this was an engraving, yeah, at the time when, for, for the first time, artists were able to like, you know, pr pr mass print their work and, and get a lot of money. So it created a whole middle class. It was it, the, the ability for, a, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the technique of copper engraving that allowed artists to, to mass produce their art, similar to how the printing press allowed literature to be mass produced. The, the Age of Aquarius is going to be um, manifested using, by it, by a new technology which will be like AI and this digital these digital platforms like TikTok and all these kind of things um, what the engraving period did uh, similar to the printing press when the printing press came came out it gave like a birth to it gave like a renaissance period of brilliant literature yeah and when the engraving when the copper plate engraving technique came out it gave birth to a renaissance period for artists okay and during the during the 15th century in Florence, the, the book, The Hermetica, was attributed to Leonardo da Vinci, to Michelangelo, to Botticelli, to all these great artists, and that gave birth to the Renaissance period. So every massive change in, in history is birthed from, from culture and art, yeah? And what I'm saying is now with the death of, with, with, with people turning away from low vibrational entertainment, we're gonna see a new birth of a new Renaissance era of high High vibrational culture entertainment and art stuff that instead of instead of like creating toxicity and bad habits and terrible mindsets and just selfish low vibrational behavior 
art and entertainment that, em that empowers people, gives them abundance, brings them wealth, joy and happiness and love and all these wonderful things that our soul naturally wants, yeah? Our soul doesn't want what Hollywood projects. That's what we're told, we're constantly bombarded by low vibrational entertainment that's all about murder, death and destruction. Like, like if you look at, if you were to watch television in the in the in the in the 50s compared to television now it's like hell and heaven yeah i'm not saying that like all those old you know all those sort of like old fuddy duddy out of you know old out of day kind of black and white movies yeah like but that that was known in hollywood as the golden era the golden the golden era of cinema yeah it was all those constant romantic films you know cleopatra all these kind of stuff i'm not saying it was all perfect i'm not saying it's all uh, there's a lot of whitewashing yeah that's going on here but what i'm saying is that like this the energy and the vibration of that stuff was completely different to what's projected by hollywood now and and the mainstream kind of media it's all incredibly tasteless quite vulgar and is constantly trying to justify and accept um vulgarity on behalf of the minority yeah of people who okay well if you're an adult then you can you can you can make your own mind up it's like well you can't really make your mind up because if you go on these platforms every other program and every other movie is just so low vibrational if it's not low vibrational in its intention and its content it's low vibrational in the symbolism that is just littered throughout it and with all the checkerboard flaws and the lyrics etc etc but anyway I don't want him to go down that route, but this is very much kind of um, a manifestation of, of this piece of art. And what I'm what I'm predicting is that this can be changed. That you know, society now, and there's so many amazing, wonderful people that I follow on TikTok and stuff like, and and just general things that I see out there. There's so much, so many talented, high vibrational creators that are out there that I think they're going to be the future stars. That instead of having you know some pop star who's wearing devil horns and just talking about filthy content and just you know boasting about how many partners they've had or 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 just or talking about drinking lean like drinking medicine with alcohol the, the uh, with sprite or whatever it's the dumbest thing ever all this low vibrational kind of stuff i think is going to be replaced by people from a high vibration and i think that those kind of people um are going to paint an age of aquarius and manifest a new version of this because Hogarth this image here even though I'm present, projecting and presenting it to you now I'm drawing awareness about it yeah um, because again like I said like in my in my opinion the symbolism is the language that these the aristocracy use and when you study their their language you realize that they bury this symbolism in all their work and for me personally, we're living in an era, and we have done for the past 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and throughout this entire Piscean age, yeah, where the symbolism of choice has been low vibrational. It's all been in honour of this Saturnian, this Saturnian deity, you know, symbols of scythe, symbols of hourglasses, Extinction Rebellion, yeah? My Extinction, extinction Rebellion people, for that, if you want to know, the symbol of Kronos, Kronos, i.e. Saturn, i.e. Satan, I old father time is an hourglass and then a magician seal is a circle that is satan in a seal okay in the same way and if, and if you want validation on this because i know my shit let me get my other thing I've got my fancy parchment during the peace movement in the 60s yeah this symbol this peace symbol was used by hippies yeah throughout the 60s right peace this is supposed to mean no this is the rune algiz and when algiz is turned up this way it means divine protection when the rune algiz is turned upside down it literally means the underworld it literally means death it's another symbol of saturn i.e chronos aka satan set whatever you want to call it so this symbol here, Algiz, is a protection symbol, okay? And on my old TikTok channel, uh, I had, I'd, on my old TikTok account that got banned and shut down, I posted a video, and it wasn't shut down for this reason, but I posted a video where there was a, someone had posted a picture of an old temple where these, these like, looked like these, these kind of religious guys were opening the temple doors. It hadn't been opened in a long time. But what I was pointing out, that on the top of the symbol were three Algiz rune signs. There was three of these symbols. And what I was pointing out, saying how this is a symbol symbol of protection when it faces this way but when you turn it upside down it means death and 
deafen the underworld. So that's why during the hippie movement, which would have been infiltrated probably by the CIA or the FBI or one of these three letter agencies or whatever, they projected that symbol so that it would kill the movement because they could see that there was an uprising of this younger generation who were, who were fighting against the Vietnam War and going against the government. So by giving them that symbol to project and to wear and to, to hold dear and use as their symbol of their, of, their, of their movement, it killed it energetically because symbols, are, like Confucius said, literally said, signs and symbols rule the world not words nor law. So Extinction Rebellion was never, ever going to work because some occultists snuck into that organisation and potentially manifested this into it. Again, potentially, I'm not, I'm not accusing anyone of doing it or saying that that definitely happened. I'm just saying if you know symbolism and you know, like, again, here's the really important thing, yeah? For people who know magic, yeah, this is the key. When you draw a rune or a symbol, yeah, you don't leave it exposed, you draw it in a circle to seal it, yeah? So, this is why you have Solomon's seals, okay? Because he was a old ancient magician who put all of his magic in seals. Because if you don't put it in a seal, right, it's incredibly dangerous. <laughs> it can backfire on the person who is trying to contain that energy. So, you have to wonder why the Extinction Rebellion symbol is in a circle and why is the peace sign in a circle and start looking at these symbols and seeing the circles. And when you see a symbol that just looks like a series of obscure shapes, yeah, you should start to question it, yeah? I reckon there's a really good reason why Aphex Twin was so popular because he is a high level magician, yeah? He knows and I respect him and I love him because I think his work is amazing but also how low vibrational, right? But you know, it is what it is. Hopefully he'll do some high vibrational stuff maybe in the future. Maybe that's something I would like to see. Yeah, confirmation there, yeah, right, there you go. That will happen, that's manifested. So, 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 how, so oh, there's one thing I wanted to wrap up before I, before I do this, because I don't want to like just leave all this weight of this Saturnian information and stuff. So the future is going to be high vibrational, right? For sure. And once people start seeing where money is being poured and once, and basically, you know, with, ev with everything going on in the world, people are more now, are more, are more now inclined to turn to high vibrational entertainment and stuff because they just, they need their soul lifted up. Like, you know, they need to feel in enlightened and raised up and cheered up and happy and feel all the things that we want to feel. Yeah. Not the, not the chaos of the evil that's constantly projected onto us by society and entertainment because their old system is all about using fear and sex to sell everything. Yeah. In the new age, the, 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 the biggest thing that's going to sell is going to be passion, love, and, high, and, and all the things attributed with the age of Aquarius. And you can go and figure that stuff out yourself. But um, what, I wanted to, what, I, what I wanted to kind of say was, um, oh, what was it? I lost my train of thought. Dush, dush. Um, oh, yes, that was it. That was exactly it. So I think what we're going to start to see, we're going to see all these major corporations and companies, all these companies that have been just poisoning the earth, polluting the seas, polluting us, putting stuff in the food, food, all this kind of thing. I think what's going to happen, these companies are going to get, they're going to lose money so fast because people are just going to continue to boycott and basically walk away from this stuff now, walk away from this symbolism, walk away from this low vibrational energy, walk away from processed foods that are really bad for us, walk away from drinking things that make us sick and make us horrible people and all that stuff and start turning to more high vibrational products and what will happen is these companies will have to match. They'll either have to become stop with the toxicity and stop with the low vibrations. And we might see brands like, 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 if 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 I give you an example, like if McDonald's wanted to invert its brand entirely, it could turn the M upside down to a W. And that would be like the most high vibrational thing ever. And if they were then selling, I don't know, smoothies and organic juices, like drive-through, I would be all down for that. I would, if McDonald's started doing that now, if they started sm selling actual organic stuff and weren't, and weren't any way affiliated to a certain William Gates and whatnot, if they, were, if they were purely high vibrational as a business, I would totally, totally put my money there, yeah? They would make more money selling healthier stuff than they would sell in the, po the, 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 the stuff that they are, yeah? But that's up to them as a corporation because, you know, they have their deity and their beliefs and they were built in their times. But 
if any, I would imagine if someone wanted to set up a, a W, an opposite version, if, if someone did, whoever does this, right, I'm manifesting this. Can someone out there please go and build the empire of whack Donalds or whatever? Like, call it whatever you want, yeah. Have a W, have fast food, dry, have drive throughs drive throughs do fast food, but fast organic food. I want to turn up and buy a bowl of avocado with like, with chickpeas, with what, well, like vegetable sushi, whatever you want to do, yeah. With organic juices, like amazing kind of non alcoholic punches, all of that. And I'm going to be coming to you every single day. Every single day, I'm going to be like, right, I'm going to Whack Donald's for lunch again. I'll be ordering it using not Deliveroo, yeah, but using some other app that really is more abundant and better for the for the for the individual that's more high vibrational you know maybe i don't know i'm not having to go at delivery maybe it is maybe it isn't that's for us to figure out but anyway that's what i'm going to think is going to happen i think companies and businesses people who get really smart and start looking at what's already existing but then just turn it high vibrational you're basically going to create yourself a business and you're going to make a whole ton of money so that's just something to think about um yeah i'm manifesting that so whack donald <laughs> Listen, whoever does it, man, I'm telling you now, I want shares for the idea. Yeah, that's all I want. You just give me some shares and I'll, and I'll peacefully leave. There'll be no lawsuits or nothing. Go and do it. Whack Donald's. Put that, invert that W, yeah, and I'm telling you now, you also invert the W and, op and flip the colours, yeah? So McDonald's operates with the lower three chakra colours, the red, the root chakra, the sacral, and the yellow, right? What you do is do the upper three, yeah? Do the, do the throat chakra, yeah? Do the, do the pineal glands, yeah? The third eye chakra, the blue, and then the crown chakra. So you have those colours. Man, you'll, whoever does that is going to be, they'll be, a, they'll be a billionaire and they deserve every penny. Um, make sure you just give it to charity properly and don't do nasty things and don't have any weird, creepy clowns. Yeah, yeah, let's, what's the opposite of a clown? Unicorns, let's have unicorns. Yeah, let's do that. Unicorn Whack Donalds, I'm, I'm a genius. I've just given you, give them someone a billion dollar business right there. Anyway, we're going to manifest this now. The age of Aquarius needs to be replaced with a new vision. And it's already been, there's nothing to fear because this has already been, the manifestation has already taken place. Like, this, this, this Saturnian age has failed, it isn't working, the illusion was broken, the spell was lifted, there is nothing to fear. Yes, there's horrible, crazy stuff going on out in the world, it's only because the people in power are losing their, their control and their grip, they're literally getting towered and all this chaos is, is unfolding. But if you really pay attention, it's unfolding on them. Now, there is obviously a lot of tragedies that are happening with that and I'm not belittling any of the awful things that are going on around the world and my absolute heartfelt thoughts and kind of I'm not going to say I'm going to say prayers but in my in my kind of way yeah go to all people that are struggling and suffering right now but the only way we make change is by literally lifting and elevating ourselves up is building out of the rubble building from the ashes and that's this is where society is at now this is what has been sort of projected onto us by these people controlling this Saturnian Piscean age and as it's collapsing and as it's crumbling, we now need the people replacing the, all of the these old institutions. Yeah, we need to come up with infrastructures of how we can, how can we have a different, better banking system? Yeah, we don't necessarily need to destroy all the banks and get rid of it. It's like how can we turn these corporations into more to be publicly owned? How can we reclaim power over them so that they're not owned by corporate individual entities that? we know isn't working how can we take more ownership as the public and reimagine these systems to work for us i think every single system and institution including our legal system needs an overhaul and i think eventually it will happen but the change has to happen from individuals wanting to consume high vibrational energies and wanting to project one in one it the desire for it to be there right and just just before i wrap up but just the kind of thing like that's how manifestations work um the, the Renaissance period by by these artists projecting their amazing new style and their new cut the, you know the world had never seen art so colorful and so amazing what it did was it inspired society it literally created generational wealth so there's an incentive for every human being to get behind this sort of behind the age of Aquarius like with you like it's, it sounds like such a it's, it, the, the term itself has been demonized in itself it sounds so stupid yeah but this new renaissance, this let's call it a digital renaissance, yeah? 
This new digital renaissance is going to bring a lot of wealth and abundance for so many people. And what's going to happen is that the more people create high vibrational stuff, the more it's going to get consumed. I, I, I don't, it's not, I, I don't believe that. I just know that to be a fact. So, and I think we're already starting to see that. So, um, so, so it by people literally embracing into this, it will then force these companies to up their game because wherever you put your money is wherever you put your attention, your focus, your time and your attention and your money is what demands change and what dictates change. And we're already seeing that to a degree with massive boycotts and with all the kind of protesting and civil disruptance that's going on around the world. It's actually amazing that people are, you know, are slowly bit by bit unifying to realise that actually, you know, the, the anger and the beef isn't against one another, it's against the systems. And even the people in the systems are kind of trapped in there themselves. They're not all wholly guilty. It's that they are themselves trapped in the same system. So we need to sort of figure out ways to sort of really highlight and isolate the high vibrational stuff and separate it from low vibrational stuff and then avoid the catastrophe that will be an ecological disaster if we don't take action. But again, there's nothing to fear because it is all... It's the age of Aquarius is here. If you look outside your window and you actually just switch your phone off and just go outside and touch grass, you'll realise that the world is actually amazing. Apart from them spraying lines in the sky, whatever those things are, um, we need to manifest the end of that. That's something that is very important that needs to be manifested to be gone because I don't like looking up at the sky and seeing all those lines. They're ugly. Regardless of whether they're safe or not, I don't know what these, what those lines that turn into big hazes yeah yeah anyway i'm gonna shut up before they take this down <laughs>